it is officially the time of year I get to put in the back five channels NCAA wrestling, which really confuses people for 27 seconds when you've been watching basketball relentlessly. You're like, wait, people are tackling each other horrifically. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out who's going to be the next 155-pound champion. It's time for Verbal Tap to show the proofs fighting way easier from outside the cage. I am your host, Kevin, with me, of course, Raph Esparza. Raph, did you watch what happened between Iowa and Penn State tonight? No, please fill me in. I don't I don't have anything. I was really hoping you watched. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I, I'm in the middle of production, so my brain is a little mush. Yeah, you're getting celebrities... Cousin. We can't say too much more, but yeah, we're <laughs> we're definitely doing things. There are some celebrities involved. Uh, Happy St. Patrick's Day! Thank you. That's I've been a better transition. Drinking. So that's good because I hope that the children who are listening to this understand. Kevin wouldn't freely break my NDA uh, <laughs> unless he was drinking. And here's the good news: didn't sign an NDA. So just joking, everybody. I'm good. <laughs> You scared. But, you nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> but so Raph's embracing Kev, the pranking spirit of the holiday. I, so there are shows that I've been on where I say things like, um, hey, I can't talk about this right now. Maybe, and I don't want to put words in people's mouth here, but maybe this is the show I don't want to talk about that I'm on. I love that. I like where you just maintain you. This is self-care. Can I throw some headlines at you? Absolutely. Some things have been happening, yes. One of them's insane. Okay. Kevin Holland. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes. If you're not aware, stopped a mass shooting. And that headline, you'd think, would be echoing through the world. I agree. I understand why it is not. There's a lot going on. But, Ref, one of MMA's <laughs> most interesting stars stopped someone who came into a place and opened fire. He, among a few other people, tackled, subdued, and took out the patron. His interview after is um, pretty maniacal in the sense that he's he kind of gives like a shout-out to Batman. Mm-hmm. That he was ready. To, this is why he got into fighting. Unbelievable. I guess your thoughts. Positive. <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck are we supposed to say? No, boo. He took down some crime. This, this, um, unbe- this is unbelievable. <laughs> this is the shit to the next level. I remember there was moments where, you know, MMA fighters have there was that John Jones where he stopped a yep. robber story, and now we all, Raph and I have postulated for several years <laughs> that that might have been a situation where John Jones stole it and blamed someone, but we're not, we, we don't want to get too deep. No, hold on, hold on. So the context you're missing on that one is do you know and remember? We've been doing this show for so long now, it might have gotten lost in translation. Do you know and remember where he was going? I thought he was headed to weigh-ins. No. Where was he headed? He was heading to my show, The Tonight Show, (laughs) to make an appearance (laughs) as the champion. That's right. So that by the time he made it on the show, when normally they do a pre-interview, and when you do a pre-interview, you go over the questions that Jay may ask or the host may ask, and they had a photo at the ready because it just happened where he and, uh, you know, Greg Jackson and some other folks subdued somebody and there was everybody looking calm. And my first thought was, this is convenient, but (laughs) I overlooked it because I was very excited that the UFC was going to be featured. And kids, I know it's very different now, but at the time, you didn't see a ton of UFC fighters on major late night television. And at that point, you know, Tonight Show was putting down about three to five million people a night. So that was huge for the UFC. And to hear John Jones had done a very good Samaritan thing, normally your brain should go, yay, score one for jiu-jitsu and MMA. But my brain, because I work at a talk show, thought, is that staged? 
And I almost wanted to ask the people that I worked with if they had any intel on it, but I never did. Well, my skepticism turned into reality just in a very, very extreme way. So when you hear like, oh, well, John Jones did run over a pregnant lady, you go, oh, I didn't. Mm, I didn't think it would be that, but <sighs> allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Oh, I mean, I guess it did happen. Yeah. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to dispute now, Kevin. Yes, it did happen. But yeah, at the time, I th I felt like a shitbag because our sport, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Kevin, our sport sometimes over glorifies people to the point where when Kevin Holland does this, I did see somebody say, was that stage? And I hope it's not because. To the best of my ability, Kevin Holland hasn't displayed signs that he might be on steroids, uh, running away from the police, headbutting a car. So it's my hope that this one is – he did it, and man, it sucks that it happened to somebody, but aren't we fortunate that he was there? So uh, yeah, this is a good story. So positive, Kevin. That's the feeling I have on this one. It's unbelievable. Just sitting there eating sushi, mm -hmm. you see people wrestling again, and you're like, it's time to shine. <laughs> Hit me with the gloves. I'm going to tape them up in my way. You know what? No, I won't. Love it. That was the biggest headline by a factor mm -hmm. of a few in other, you know, just tiny potluck at the end of the rainbow. Rap Hardy off UFC roster. Yeah. After final contracted fight. That feels good, doesn't it? How long did that take? In COVID years? Mm hmm A decade. Several decades. I'm gonna I'm gonna type this up. I haven't actually looked it up. I feel it's like what, twenty eighteen that he became a UFC fighter of some sort. I think it's a little earlier. I think he's been with us for three or four years now. January twenty nineteen. So I'm pretty close. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I was going to say 2017. Mm -mm. So he started fighting officially glad we did the research. in June 2018. So, again, my contention was when was he starting to fight for the UFC? And I do remember it because it was the launch of ESPN Plus. So it was a major fight. And uh, yeah, he was uh, DQ'd for that illegal knee. So that was a fun oh, excursion was. into that. Yep. But it's nice because the UFC saw that he lost three in a row. And they kind of said, like, you know, hey, dude, we can't keep you around anymore. And they tried spacing it out where it was once every year. So, you know, he fought 2022, March, July 2021, December 2020. And then they just go, dude, we're done. We can't – this is not good to the point where they said is the experiment over a few weeks ago, and we mentioned that on this show. It is mercifully done. Now, it's not to say the UFC is completely void of dumb characters and personalities. It just feels nice to not have this one, though. It, it really does, though. Well, Raph, we're in a small MMA downtime. Okay. I mean that in the nicest sense of of the phrase. I would love to know what you mean by that. There's one week where there aren't fights. Mm -hmm. And see the ESPN Plus ticker. But maybe there are. Are there fights this Saturday? I'm going to go look. Uh, it's hard. So there were fights over the weekend, though. Were there then? Yes. Well, because then... you may recall I sent you a text I retract. Drew Dober. Oh, Dobie's fought. That's right. Yes. There was a whole nother event. Yep. That's and why when you said that, I go, how long have I been on this show that I'm working on now? I know that I lose track of space and time. And yes, it wasn't the most exciting weekend in the world, but Song Yadong got a knockout. <laughs> Congrats. Uh, Khalil Roundtree said some really nice things. After he won, he let you know you 
is important and you are your mental health is important he went on a nice little rant about that and honestly it's the kind of wholesome entertainment you hope for every once in a while but drew dober was on the receiving end of a beating for a little bit and it wasn't a long fight this is the santos enclave yeah back in march 12th if you can believe it that was just a few days ago yep and drew was concerning me, but uh, Terrence McKinney found something that I think you and I know to be true, which is that Drew Drober is kind of built like a brick, like a tank. I and thought you were going to say something so different. I thought you were going to like, he's kind of say. pretty and his jaw is hard to find <laughs> locationally. So, no, yeah, but yeah. That, like a that's a good second place. So, Drew took a nice sabbatical from his modeling career to fight this past weekend. <laughs> and I was worried, dude, because he was taking shots, and he made a miraculous comeback. And you know what's really great is when you know that people don't necessarily know who he is. They may have seen him fight, but they don't put one and one together. When they go, like, Who's this Drew Dober? Man, he's fucking insane. I'm like, he's been here on a number of prominent UFC cards. This is not his first rodeo of being indestructible or or hard to beat. But I was super proud of him. And, uh, you know, he's sporting some black eyes at the post presser. And uh, it's weird because (laughs) he immediately took some photos. No, he immediately took some photos, Kevin, and they're the same kind of model photos that he takes, but that he had those strategically placed kind of look to his face, uh, bags under the eyes after getting into a fight. And I go, is this as fake as the John Jones? No, it's Dudro. I saw him get punched. Yeah, those are real. Okay. But for a split second, I go, God damn it. Even when he's modeling after he fought and got beat up, it looks like something that they doctored up for one of his model photo shoots. Doctor gets in trouble, mm. whatever they, they call it, right? Robes mm. gentlemen in armed conflict. Ankalev wins. Yadong wins. Mm-hmm. Yusuf wins. Yadong and Dober are our two punchies, along with Roundtree Jr., who wins. And Piera. Pereira. Pereira. It's going to be a so, struggle for me. It, don't worry, you don't have to say it for too long. Uh, what I'm going to send you right now is on your Facebook, just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about with Drew's face. Where you go, yeah, he got beat up, but honestly, for as like worried as most people mm. were about him, this bodes well for his photography sort of nonsense, because it looks like he's making a very <laughs> Robert Pattinson as Batman choice with some mascara underneath the eyes. He looks like one of Joker's friends, like Joker's sparring partners. <laughs> Or somebody who's trying on a football helmet for the first time and didn't quite do the under eyes the right way. Well, and all I can see behind it is me at the Pasadena City Hall for your wedding. Yeah, that's true. We just celebrated seven years, Kevin. Seven years? That I Your know. wedding was seven years ago? Seven years ago, dude. I know. I felt so much younger. Seven. Things were a lot You've different seven years ago. Yeah. Seven years? Well, okay. This is some good math to keep in mind. So when the pandemic hit, Kelly and I were going to be celebrating our fifth year anniversary, and we had to cancel our plans because the world was a little confused as to what to do. And I remember Kelly being on the phone with her mom, who is a nurse, And we were kind of in that phase where they go, hey, you guys probably should stay home. Everybody, you know, two weeks off, all that sort of stuff. And Kelly and I looked at each other. We go, right, but it's our fifth year anniversary. And that only happens once. So maybe we should go keep our dinner plans. (laughs) And then we canceled them like responsible adults. So that one, it stung a little bit. But yeah, that's why now when (laughs) – 
<laughs> we what were do on you call the seven year? Week. It looks like Drew Dober's face in this picture. <laughs> Happy seven year. Thank you. When we were on vacation last week, uh, Kelly jokingly, when I said, yeah, can you believe it's been seven years? She goes, has it been that long? I go, shut the fuck up. You know it's seven years. You're a girl. Girls know this shit. Don't pretend like you've conveniently forgotten. She immediately laughed at me making fun of her and being like, don't pull that bullshit. Girls always know. Dudes are the ones that forget. I just happen to be decent at math. But if the CTE sets in from all the years of jujitsu, eh, it's probably going to get worse. So, yeah, I might legit forget at some point. But for now, I know it's been seven years. So, ta-da. Jealous you're good at math. Thank Bragger. you. Um, yeah. All right. Any more call-outs from the fights? You see No. Fights. So, uh, the, the fights were pretty subdued. You asked if there was going to be anything happening this next weekend. And the result, I have to tell you, is yes, there is. And guess what, governor? They're across the pond. People are fighting at the Ryder Cup? Uh, well, kind of. No, they're, they're fighting at the O2 Arena in London, England. That counts. Is Michael Bisping there? I think he is. And also, uh, Patty, how do we refer to this dude? Patty Pimblett got into a major altercation with somebody. Dumbledore? That's not a real mm. name. Come on, Raph. Patty Pimblett got into an altercation this weekend, and it was weird because it was already on social media, and I had no interest in Patty's fight until I saw. <laughs> like the video that like went viral and I go, Oh, I'm kind of interested in inviting now, but Israel Adesanya is even weighing in on Patty Pimblet and saying he's getting fed a bum. <laughs> so here's what I love about headlines on occasion fed that make bum. me think of other people. Um, I don't know what you feel like, but are you familiar with Lauren Michaels? Kev? Um, creator of SNL. Correct, yes. Lauren Michaels, the guy who still runs SNL after all these years. Yes. Do you know who he is famously parodied by in a major film franchise? I really hope you're talking about Mike Myers mm -hmm. in the illustrious The Spy Who Shagged Me Austin Powers series is the character Dr. Evil. Yes. Now... Thank if God. you listen to Thank God. Any... Honestly, that was really pressure filled. <laughs> I, I know everybody right. else is like, Kevin, it's not a big deal. It's an easy question. It's like, this is Raph. He's going to hold well, his also... me up for a decade if I'm like, it's true. Is you, it Jim Carrey? It <laughs> <laughs> it's also much harder when you're on the spot on a recording on that does live forever. St. Patrick's yes. Day. It's true. Your holiest of days. Oh, by the way, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. It's, thank you. I it's would not say, a day we have happiness on. It's the same. It's an <laughs> Irish drinking day. We just like try and survive it. And I'm thank you, I'm doing great. So Dana White was quoted as saying something, but the way in which he says it reminds me of the way the, most comedians parody Lauren Michaels. Because if you listen to any comedy podcast, especially even Conan's, Rob Lowe's, there's a new SNL podcast with David Spade and uh, Dana Carvey, oddly, uh, called Fly on the Wall. But everybody does the Lorne Michaels impression. Now, I don't pretend like I know him. I do not know him. I think I once accidentally hang up or hung up on him when I was working in the late night offices. That was a very scary moment for me. But... Uh, the way that Dana White says this, it sounds like he's turning into, in his older age, a more different version of Lauren Michaels, just from this headline. Because the headline reads, Dana White thinks that Patty Pimblin has that thing, you know, where you've got to win fights. You know. I like the way that they phrase that, because Dana White, <laughs> like... That's 100 percent something that you do hear Lord Michaels when they they like make fun of him. They always use as a filler word. They go, 
you know, Chevy has that thing where he doesn't really know, but he gets there. And hearing Data White say that, yeah, Petty Pembley has that thing, but, you know, you've got to win fights. Mm. <laughs> so, just a little comparison I thought I'd give for the two worlds that I happen to know a lot about. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful. Once every six to seven years when this happens. <laughs> when I use my expertise knowledge, my my extra bonus level of knowledge of things in MMA and late night comedy happens. Sometimes it's justified. I can't promise you that was. I was in. I had a very good time. Raph, mm. what am I supposed to do here? Milk do more mean? out of these 16 fights than our beautiful friend Drew Dober. Do I talk about how smells burger <laughs> sounds like Schleffinger? What do we do? So are you talking about the previous fights? The one that happened this past weekend? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was ready to move on. Oh, cause... me too. No, this is a beg yeah. for help on the way out. <laughs> um, where do we head? Um, I'll tell you a few things of what I'm saying. Okay, I've been so first gambling all, way too much on March Madness, not focusing on anything other than that. Are you winning any money on March Madness? That's not the important okay. question. The important <laughs> question is, am I having fun? Am I having mm. me time? This I've already prepared this when my wife earlier was like, are you winning? I was like, <laughs> of course I'm winning. I'm enjoying my time more. I'm having she's now fun. thinking about your child, though. I think she's pretty much thinking, like, that could go to buy us stuff for your kid. Look, I, I've just noticed he hasn't started banging objects together like the pediatrician said he should. So maybe we shouldn't be worried about college just yet. We'll see. Once he starts banging stuff, you know. Understood. <laughs> There's plenty Understood. of time. I get it. Pump the brakes. Maybe he's just How be a sad really is good it? NCAA wrestler. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, somebody's got to be because <laughs> there's it is. If you, this is the lovely time of year where Raph and I both accidentally find ourselves being like all the other stations are covering this. And look at what ESPN2 has on the NCAA mm -hmm. wrestling yeah. tournament. It's a fun time. I love going up to people and telling them how much I know about wrestling when I don't. But I like to see how long it is before they figure it out. You so see that head snap? That, I that did. That head snap was lovely. He really one, two, three did it, didn't he? I saw the head snap, but I also saw uh, Gable leapfrog over another human being. Oh, my God. And I thought, oh, is that what you could do? I guess I've never really thought to do that because it just I never get anybody down that bad. Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> then it, you know it takes a moment but i would tell you it is kind of nice to have that going on because one of my friends uh kyle he put up a video and this is when you can kind of get an idea of the, the stuff that you don't know about so obviously ncaa you kind of know it's going to be decked out you know what you're looking at but the night before i can't tell if it's a big event that he went to but it looked like their version of submission underground where the setup was way more advanced in terms of the color scheme. Uh, there was a high rise. It looked like it was at a, a theater of some sort. And I go, yo, that looks really dope. And I sent him a note. I go, dude, that looks amazing. And he goes, I know, man. Not like you're right or yeah, thanks. It was, yeah, wrestling's kind of dope. And I just thought to myself, like, we'll never get to understand some of those things. The, that belongs, that experience belongs purely to wrestlers. So, wrestlers, be lucky that is you. I guess is what I'm saying. So, yeah, should be good. Ref, we're at episode yeah. 499. I know. What do we do here? Do we stop? Do we reflect? Do we wait? Do we give that time to process or do we continue to buy time and throw some topics, including the fact that I'm I'm doing a crystal wedding? You are doing 
you did very vaguely mention that. Um, there's a couple things we should mention. Uh, we should mention, yes, uh, the Tupuria or Tupura and Patty Pimblet uh, altercation. Go look at that if you didn't get the chance to. I would tell you, uh, Patty Pimblet is also blasting Cormier and Bisping for the commentary of his debut. All for that. Don't even care. Don't need to know the context. Um, I'm I'm excited for a number of things because ADCC is apparently capped off at the maximum number of competitors for the trials. What do you mean? They won't let anybody else in? They're done. That That's as many as they can take. I think altogether there's a thousand competitors who are scheduled to compete in Vegas. This is the this is kind of the spoils of grappling riches, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's very good. Um I should also mention slash devastating. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of people who are like, fuck. I really feel like I could win that. Yeah. And you know, I get it. But they've been they've been pushing this for a while. Uh to kind of jump back on the Dana White as Lauren Michaels oh. in his older age metaphor. He did say Please. this week uh, he had a comment on the Kamaru Usman super fight or crossover fight that he's trying to make happen in boxing against Canelo. And I feel like if I read it in Lord Michael's voice, you'll kind of understand more of what I think I'm trying to put out here. Yes. But uh, this is Dana White as Lord Michaels in his response to Kamaru Usman's pushing to get a fight against Canelo Alvarez. You know, the whole boxing versus MMA thing is just, you know, silly. Right. <laughs> Dana White, everybody, as Lauren Michaels. <laughs> so, again, this is the way he starts it off, though. He goes, you know, I think that if Usman's serious about it, and he shouldn't be, I don't really like that fight. Everything about it is horrible. Usman's not a boxer. Canelo is probably the best. Um, it's a stupid fight, and it makes no sense. Hmm. To me, I think what happens is when people get really famous and really good at being the boss, so... Dana White being the boss of UFC, Lorne Michaels has a lot of NBC real estate. Not only does he executive produce Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show, SNL, Late Night with Seth Meyers. MacGruber. He also has MacGruber on Peacock. He has Young, or not, not Young Rock, it's Keenan. That's a sitcom. He has like literally footholds in most things that, like Tina Fey has done. And anytime there's a breakout star, like I think Pete Davidson just locked down a deal to have a sitcom. He's got a foothold in that. When somebody on the cast goes to do something outside it, it's usually through his uh, Broadway banner. Like it's, it's impressive. I, I'm very, very pleased, but because both of them are mega successful, you know, sometimes the voice is just, you know, you don't really want to say a bad thing about Kevin, because here's the thing: Kevin, he gambles, but <laughs> hmm, he shouldn't, because I would say the gambling really gambles on him, and that's a Lauren Michaelsism. I've been doing okay. But I just, wrong. I'm so worried about. But you have been good on the over unders, so that is a positive that we've been able to yes. turn lately. And I have not put up the clip yet, so I don't think that Ben even knows. I think he might just assume that he's won, and only because I haven't put up the clip where I say that he explicitly lost. Knowing people like that and their confidence, he'll just assume that's a victory. Ooh, but speaking of which, uh, Casey uh, Casey uh, Layden, he's fighting this weekend, and I am trying to fight uh, to go see it. So if I get off of work in time, because uh, we're we're shooting that day, I'm going to do my best to go see him. 
uh, fight. So hopefully I can snag some photos. But uh, yeah, Casey was just on about a month ago and he was prepping for his fight through the Wimp to Warrior program. He's been training over at Systems Training Center with our good friends Angel and Marcus and uh, very much looking forward to his MMA debut. He's been working really hard. Like, man, he's put in the time and he's been such a great reporter and presence in the MMA community. I'm hoping the best for him. So fucking hard to fight him. Yeah. For real. Yeah. It's it's just legit. Like, stop and think for a moment what your life would look like if that's where you're you were training. Raf, that'll do it for us, right? Yep. Four ninety nine. Yep. We rock a half hour in here. I am Kevin. Thank you for listening. And I too get jealous when Raf starts selling tonight show stories. Good night. And good night. You know, good night. <laughs> yeah, I love this mm. character so much. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is...